Bang, bang. What's up? Lunch money time. While Wall Street's trying to get rich. See that? While Wall Street's trying to get rich, the rest of us just trying to get our lunch money right. I'm here with the beautiful, intelligent, Plina Ivailova Marinova Pompliano, yes. a.k.a. Pimp. She looks like she is about to take some Molly and go to like a rave or something. What, what are you wearing? I'm I, trying to get the views up so people click on the little thumbnail because I'm colorful. Colorful is one thing. Uh, that'll be one description. It's all right. I'm back. I got the Yankee hat. Yankees 1-0 going after the 28th World Championship. I'll see you guys. Oh, it should be October, but we'll see when the actual season ends. Championship season. Don't forget, Lunch Money is now brought to you by BlockFi. BlockFi has three products. You can buy and sell crypto. You can deposit crypto and get a U.S. dollar loan. Or my favorite product as an investor and a user is that you can deposit Bitcoin or a stable coin. You can earn up to 8.6% APY. Absolute no-brainer. There's risk. Go do your research. But use BlockFi.com slash Lunch Money and you get special treats. Can, I can't deal with this can, shirt. Can you tell the people that I didn't sleep this morning? She did not sleep this morning because I woke her ass up at 8.30 and said, get out of bed. <laughs> I got coffee for you and we you got try, things to do today. You try to bribe me with all sorts of things, but here we are. <laughs> all right. What's going on with 1MDB? Okay. So U.S. Investment Bank, Goldman Sachs, on Friday reached a $3.9 billion settlement with Malaysia over the multi-billion dollar 1MDB scandal that will see all criminal charges against the bank dropped. That is insane. First of all, tell us what 1MDB is. Well, first of all, it's not on Friday. It's today. Today is, today Friday. is Friday. That's fine. Uh, 1MDB basically is a uh, fund. Uh, it had a couple of bonds that the Malaysian government uh, participated in and other investors. There's about $6.5 billion total raised. Uh, Goldman Sachs was the bankers on the deal. There's a gentleman, Joe Lowe, a gentleman. Uh, who is still on the loose. On the uh, loose. <laughs> but out of the $6.5 billion, 4.5 of it was misappropriated, aka stolen, and it was used to fund his lifestyle. So for people that don't know, $4.5 billion was used to do all kinds of things, including uh, buy- Fund Wolf of Wall Street, the movie. What? Yes, that's true. It did fund the Wolf of Wall Street. It also uh, funded Daddy's Home. There was a uh, thing called uh, Red Granite Studios, I think. And basically it was the son of the Malaysian leader uh, was running a film studio and Joe Lo kept feeding him money. Um, and so that was all stolen. Then there was a $250 million yacht, quarter of a billy uh, yacht just hanging out in Bali. There's a $35 million private jet. There was a dozen properties or homes across London, New York, California. Uh, there was a glass piano that was sitting in Miranda Kerr's house that they couldn't get out of her house. Um, Miranda Kerr. So all so kinds of crazy I, can stuff I, can going on. Can I just on. say something that's kind of like, you know, uh, touchy? So I thought that Joe Lowe, like he's dating these supermodels. He's buying these yachts. I was expecting this guy to look like I don't even know what. And he looks I, like a panda. And then I Googled him, and then he looks like a panda. Yeah, it looks like it looks like a little fat, happy panda. I don't know. I don't know. Whatever, I just... it's fine. At the end of the day, he came. He became boys with Leonardo DiCaprio, all these supermodels, all this stuff, whatever. But he stole all the money, and he was doing super nefarious stuff. But it turns out that Goldman Sachs was participating in it. There's two bankers from Goldman Sachs who've been arrested by the U.S. government. Uh, they've been charged. They've had to turn over, you know, tens of millions of dollars. Goldman made $600 million in fees from helping uh, with the fund. And so finally, Goldman Sachs and the Malaysian government reached a settlement today. They are going to pay $3.9 billion settlement. Uh, that includes $2.5 billion in cash and $1.4 billion in assets related to these stuff being returned. That? And all of that is uh, said to be much more than Goldman had previously offered, but it's still less then the $4.5 billion that was taken, and therefore somehow Goldman escapes once again, no yeah. criminal charges. Can I, can I just, this is absurd. Can I just say something? Yeah. If it, like, white collar crime has always fascinated me because of the way we treat it and the way we talk about it versus petty crime. So let's say somebody went and robs a gas station. What are you going to say? Like, so the funds were misappropriated, but we will not be seeking criminal charges against of this. Of course. It's so ridiculous. Of course. And don't forget, what is the These currency of choice? Of the currency of choice to commit crimes like this is the U.S. dollar. So next time somebody tells you that only criminals use Bitcoin, 
Eh, show them what happens in the legacy financial system. All right, what's going on with schools? Yeah, show them. I'm done talking about Joe Lowe. But if anyone knows where he is, nobody knows where he is. He's reportedly in China. If anyone can find him and get him, I will bring him on the podcast. And I have a lot of questions for Mr. Joe Lowe. What's going on with schools? So the CDC... So you know how there's this rhetoric of like open schools, don't open schools. It's a whole politicized thing. Now the CDC comes out and says it issued guidelines on education and childcare, and it's come coming down hard in favor of opening schools, saying children don't suffer much from coronavirus, are less likely than, than adults to spread it, and they suffer from being out of school. But then it goes on to say, but hold on, if there is substantial uncontrolled transmission of the virus, you should close them or keep them closed. It's like me. You lost me at CDC. Does anybody trust these people anymore? <laughs> they had one job and one job only. It, l- literally. And remember, back in February and March, they were telling you masks don't work. So either they, they're idiots or they're liars. It turns out that they end up being liars because they knew that masks work and they didn't want to cause an absolute chaos for people running out and grabbing PPE. So literally what they did is they went on national television. They lied to the American people. I don't care what they have to say. Can can we, aside from the CC, CDC, can we talk about this education issue for a second? Yeah, yesterday, what about it? Yesterday we had a very interesting conversation about how maybe COVID presents kind of a an opportunity for reforming education or kind of restructuring the way we learn and maybe virtual education would allow people to learn from the best instructors and from the best schools instead of being confined to your teachers at your public school but at the same time there's kids in abusive households and things like that that schools going somewhere during the day is probably safer for them yeah imagine being a kid right now and being stuck at home with your parents and your parents aren't going to work like there's kids who are literally going crazy being like, dude, get me out of here. Like I got to go see my, I got to go do something else. So like, there's definitely like non-education, um, you know, aspects to this, but from a pure education standpoint, uh, most kids would get a better education, uh, if they were able to get information from, uh, the internet rather than the schools that they go to. And there's a lot of teachers out there who are very, very talented, very, very good at what they do, but there's also a lot of teachers who are not good at what they do. And if you go and you see what is happening in a lot of American schools, people are appalled, right? It's like, look, we've got to do a better job educating uh, our children. And so at the end of the day, um, this isn't going to solve that problem either way, right? Like, do they go to school? Do they not? Instead, what is going to happen is technologists are going to reimagine education. Uh, You see that with kind of higher education first. So you see things like Lambda School, whatever, um, actually being able to produce um, better trained people uh my guess is that that will eventually trickle down into high school middle school and when, elementary school i still remember the day so when we moved from bulgaria i started school in atlanta and then the day that one day i came home and i was like like a zombie i was like mom today in school we watched a movie <laughs> like that was like I, I i didn't even know that happened in classrooms but it was great my favorite thing is that Polina told me when she moved here uh second grade i think uh, in Bulgaria, they were solving for X. And like, for me, that's when like, I checked out of math. I was like, wait a minute, there's letters Algebra. in math. Like I'm out. But I was uh, failing math, but, but they were solving grade. for X in second grade in Bulgaria. And she came here and they were doing addition. And she was like, wait, I'm a math genius. It was, they were like, this kid is a savant. <laughs> All right. What's going on with TikTok? TikTok has unveiled a $200 million fund for its U.S. creators. So basically, it's going to, what, what is it going to do for it's gonna, them? Well, it's really hard for people to make money on TikTok, oh, right. right? So uh, for a whole bunch of different reasons. One, they don't share re- uh, advertising revenue. Two is, what exactly are you going to do from like a direct response standpoint? So it's not like you can create a TikTok video and be like, hey, click on this link and uh, then go buy right. this product. So it's all like brand awareness type stuff or the creators on TikTok who get famous then try to go and build out other platforms or do things elsewhere. Now TikTok's like, look, just keep creating content and we'll just pay you money. You know what I've noticed lately? A lot of TikTokers are saying like, let me prank my brother. And then they prank them. And then they're like, for the reaction, 
go check out my Instagram. So they're actively trying to funnel people to their Instagram. Well, they're scared that it's going to get banned right. in the U.S. Right. And so TikTok's taking all kinds of steps here. They hired a U.S. Uh, citizen as the CEO who used to be at Disney. Uh, they have now created this fund. So they're going to start actually paying creators. I'm sure a lot of that's going to get funneled to U.S. creators. Uh, they're talking about potentially hiring uh, an enormous amount of U.S. US citizens. Based. Um, as uh, employees, right? They're doing everything they possibly can to prevent being banned in the United States. That would be a massive blow to their business. Uh, but at the end of the day, TikTok's not the only one who does this. A lot of people don't know this, but uh, YouTube, Facebook, all of these platforms pay people for content. Uh, they usually do it very quietly, uh, but there are a lot of people getting paid to create content on platforms. Uh, they just don't come out and say, hey, we have a $200 million fund. People are getting paid on Facebook? Oh, yeah. For sure. My, my grandmother in Bulgaria needs to get paid for creating content. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, think, it, look, it's not like that hard to figure out, right? I, I worked at the company, so I know a little bit more. But in terms of just the outward perception, you have, uh, let's say, a uh, professional athlete or somebody who's famous, and they create a show specifically for Facebook. You think that they're, they're right, doing that out right. of the kindness of their heart? No, they're, they're figuring out some financial incentive to get out of it, whether it's Facebook directly paying them or uh, they're getting some other financial incentive. Of course, that's why they're doing it. So yeah. look, it, this makes but, sense. Uh, the big question is just like, if you're a kid now, all of a sudden, do you want to be a pro athlete or do you want to be a creator? I think like you being want to a, be a creator. Being and, a creator is going to become like the aspirational thing to do. And I think it is really uh, smart of these kids to start building out their other platforms. So they're just diversified across with followers instead of just on TikTok. Absolutely. All right. What's up with Tesla? Tesla takes aim at Rivian, which is another electric uh, car company, in lawsuit alleging trade secret theft and poaching of talent. What do you think? I mean, I think they all do that, right? Yeah. They, all they said together. Rivian recruits Tesla employees and encourages them to take proprietary information as they leave. Uh, it, yeah. It's pretty hard to prove this stuff. And uh, in my opinion, um, they're all recruiting from each other. I'm sure Tesla's recruiting from Rivian. Rivian's recruiting from Tesla. Somebody's recruiting from Nikola. You know, somebody's recruiting from the electric vehicle department of Ford or GM. Uh, there's only so many people who yeah, are. Yeah, but Tesla are, claims that Rivian has hired 178 former employees. Yeah, but if you think about that, okay, so you've got thousands of employees that work at Tesla. They hired 178 over, let's call it, the last five years. It still sounds like a big number. Is it? About 70 of those employees joined the startup directly from Tesla. Yeah, well, okay, so that means 108 of them didn't work at Tesla at well, the time that they true. were being that's recruited, true. right? So two thirds of them didn't work there. One third, you know, or so did. Um, again, like it, at the end of the day, there's only so many people that are skilled uh, to work on these types of problems. And so of course there's gonna constantly be a talent so, lure and recruit it. And this isn't the first time that Tesla has sued a company for something like this. Do you think some of it is done just to kind of scare people a little bit? Intimidate? Of course. And also to tie up if all if you've got billions of dollars and you can tie somebody up in court, you can get all mm. kinds of things. Like it's it's classic. You're in a competition, right? Who's gonna win? Tesla's got a very big lead, but I don't see them taking their foot off the gas anytime. So whatever. Oh, okay. So the next topic is Bezos in a suit. So you guys may remember we had Oh, little, I remember. We had a little bet going. Um, I forgot what the, the bet reward was, but I just remember the bet. I said that Jeff Bezos, if he goes to this tech hearing, he will wear a suit and tie. No, no, you no, didn't. No, no. no you didn't. said he Sorry. would not. See, look, you see the revisionist hi history? Sorry, you I said forgot. he wouldn't wear a suit and tie. I said he would. He, he would wear a, like a t-shirt or like just just something else other than a suit and tie, a space outfit. I can't believe she just tried to, suit. tried to change her so, story. I forgot what I was saying. So he um, he said he would wear a suit and tie. Well, guys, we might not know because the tech CEO hearing will probably be postponed. It was supposed to happen on Monday. Uh, this coming Monday, uh, yeah. the it's an antitrust hearing, which basically they're bringing Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, a bunch of tech CEOs in. They're basically just going to grill them, right? And they're going to say, explain to us why you're not a monopoly. <laughs> it's, it's, explain to us what antitrust this yeah, is. Yeah, like it, it just explain to us why you're not anti competitive. Explain to us why you're not a monopoly. All these kind of things. Uh, what and is a all Facebook of these, Messenger? Well, all of these CEOs agreed to come. So Jeff Bezos, Tim Cook, Mark Zuckerberg, Sundar Pichet, right? Like they all agreed to come and, and do this. So it's going to be a big deal. Now, all of a sudden, 
Uh, one, you've got COVID, which kind of put it in limbo. But uh, actually, think... it's John Lewis. Uh, is that is that the guy's name? Uh, Am I getting that correct? Uh, wait, the John yeah, Lewis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that was right. So John Lewis is the civil rights leader who uh, recently died. He he was a elected official, um, and if I remember correctly, it's because uh, the memorial service for him is happening uh, yeah. around the same time or in the same building. That would and not... so they uh, they postponed the tech hearing. There's a lot of they haven't uh, tech yet CEOs postponed it, that, but it's like they're breathing now. Well, I I think you the, think that they're going to ask Mark Zuckerberg about his uh, the sunscreen photo. Oh my God, yes. I mean, they asked him about his haircut. So, but I just think that this is buying Bezos time to select which T-shirt he wants to sport. There's zero chance that he's showing. I up want in a him t-shirt. coming in with guns blazing. Mark Zuckerberg will wear a suit and you know, tie too. You know how, All right, what's going on with Taylor Swift? You know how Conor McGregor walks into the arena. That's how. Uh, <laughs> that's how. What's his name? Bezos is gonna walk in. <laughs> See. Are you okay. on drugs right no. now? No. You look like you're going to a rave and you're yeah, acting like been, you're at a rave. It's been a while since I had a laugh attack, though. We don't need any of those. All right, what's going on with Taylor Swift? Taylor Swift. Are, are you pro Taylor Swift or con I'm Taylor I'm incredibly Swift? pro Taylor Swift. Come at me in the comments. I know you will, but I am. I think that she's a fraud. I don't think so. Why not? She's as much as a fraud as Kanye is a fraud. She's not a fraud. No, but she, she tries to manipulate the media to make people feel bad. Hold on a second. To make people feel bad for her. No. when When it's, okay, so take this scooter bar. So those that don't know, Taylor Swift uh, <gasps> made this big issue with uh, Scooter Braun and his partner buying basically the library of music, the rights to her music. But what she doesn't tell people is that she signed a contract that the person who was selling the rights had the legal right to do that. And basically she threw a fit afterwards being like, oh, this is just a man trying to keep a woman down, blah, blah, whatever. And everyone's just like, Scooter Braun's like, wait, what are you talking about? Like, we literally did a business deal. There's a legal contract. You agreed to this. And I've tried to call you a bunch of times and you refuse to talk to me about it. It's a he said, she said situation. You're not in there. You don't know. You haven't seen the It's a court of law. You don't know. It, it, there's a court of law. If somebody, if you made a bad business deal, that's fine. You could say, hey, I wish I didn't sell my music rights. I think rights. there's more going on behind the scenes than you know. Anyway, big Taylor Swift fan. So, she didn't sue. She so, didn't sue. Oh my God, be quiet. Okay. So during the if pandemic. She had a legal, if she had a legal case, she would have sued him. Just saying. All right. What's up with Taylor Swift? I ain't a Swifty. Nah. Yes, he is. When we were in Italy, we listened to her whole album oh, and he liked I'll it. listen to the music. That's oh. fine. I'm just saying that I'm not buying the sob story. Okay. So Taylor Swift, uh, during the pandemic, had a lot of time and she um, released the surprise album at midnight today. I, I will say this. We watched the documentary on Taylor Swift. There's two things that you can't deny. She's incredibly talented and she works her ass off. Like she, she works really, really hard in it. You can and? see she's like literally writing the songs on her phone, singing them, writing more, singing, editing. But like she works hard and she's talented, but I still got a bad taste. In I, mouth. I also think that give it time. Uh, I also think that uh, she's been one of the rare uh, artist that has been able to reinvent herself time after time. She she became famous that. when she was 16. I was in high school. Yeah. And I always do feel bad that Kanye West interrupted her on the stage. I'm going to let you finish, but. That was absurd. <laughs> and then Beyonce got up and she's like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> um, all right. Well, that's it for today, guys. But I have a joke from a uh, Lunch Money viewer. Andre, anyone. <laughs> He said, why aren't koala bears considered to be real bears? Uh, this is a layup. Who, mm. who sent us this one? Andre. Andre. It's because they don't have the qualification. <gasps> Duh. Did, you, did you know that? Ooh. Wait, did you see that? Oh, you, you read it on the channel. I read the internet. Damn I read it. the internet. But wasn't that a good one? Andre, you did a great job. Will you say it again for the people? So... Koala bears aren't considered real bears. No, because, why aren't? Because they lack the qualifications. Ha 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 ha. Yo, Andre, come on, dog. <laughs> come on, man. We got We got to step dog? up the joke. We got to so step. What are you saying? Dog, dog, koala. Come on, we got to step it up, man. We got to step it up. <laughs> I liked it, Andre. These Keep are bad doing jokes. You. All right, here's the deal. I want to know who you guys think is the best musician of all time. Rapper, singer, whatever you want, put in the comments. That's what I want to know today. Who is the best musician of all time? I could be a musician with this shirt. 
Uh, no, you're going to be fired from this show with that <laughs> shirt, breaking dress code, looking like a fool. <laughs> Uh-oh, I'm going to get in trouble for that one. By the way, Yankees 1-0, going to go for the 20th championship this year. We'll see you guys on Monday. Have a great weekend. That's lunch money. We'll watch she's trying to get rich. The rest of us trying to get our lunch money right. Pray for me that I make it to Monday. Bang, bang. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Lunch Money as much as we did. And don't forget, Lunch Money is now sponsored by Block5. So go check them out. There's a link in the description that you can click on. I'm an investor, a user, and a huge fan. What? You're a bigger fan of BlockFi than you are of me? BlockFi is my second favorite thing in the world behind <laughs> Polina. They've got three products. <laughs> they can give you a U.S. dollar loan. You can earn up to 8.6% interest on an interest-bearing account. Or you can buy and sell cryptocurrencies on their crypto exchange. I personally use the interest-bearing account. There's not very many places where you'll find up to 8.6% interest on a deposit in an interest-bearing account. Go do your own research. There's risk associated, but 8.6% is pretty compelling. So click on the link in the description. Say thanks to the folks at BlockFi. Subscribe to our channel. Like the video. Annoy Polina in the comments. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. And be kind to your friends.